Yeah, well, I think, I mean, one thing I would say is maybe just an overview of, of how uh, techniques like FGG can be involved into uh, mineral exploration in, in, in the real world. Um, theory is great, but it's, what does it actually do for us? How do we actually use these techniques? So um, one thing that I can say for sure is that it's, it's extremely difficult to spot gold nuggets. Uh, I've got a little gold nugget here. Uh, this is from uh, Zimbabwe, and it's a beautiful little thing trapped in quartz, but you're never going to be able to spot it remotely, not even not even with the, uh, the precision of instruments that Gord has. So fortunately, the one thing we can say is that if we have characteristic signatures of these deposits, we can go and find them. And certainly uh, things like buried porphyry deposits, which is a particular type of, of uh, deposit, uh, can contain millions of tons of things like copper and gold. So therefore, the signal we get is is, is extremely important. Uh, the example that uh, Gord just mentioned of the Bushveld complex in, in in South Africa is is very well known to to miners around the world. It's uh, an enormous deposit containing all sorts of um, valuable uh, metallic um, elements, uh, things like platinum group metals, um, it contains some chrome in there, and it's all hosted um, in a, a very large folded complex of, of igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks. So being able to find similar features in the, the vicinity, uh, Gord mentioned Malopo Farm, uh, that's hugely advantageous for explorers, um, particularly if you can fly um, rapid surveying across the area. So, so that's great. 